the crew worldwide From Kali to Twitter Real hardcore fans Boxing ass niggas Consistency cops Police the views We'll pull up receipts for any debates you choose Shout outs to Clan Arky for the dope production Ring gang stay with the best discussions yes. Ring gang Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good, yo? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, if shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for today, Pat Scorpio, the New England representative. And uh, as always, I got my man with me. I'm going to let him introduce himself. What it do? It's your boy, LB, a.k.a. Lauderdale Boss. You know what it is. Shutterworth the God, the GOAT artist, the Soul Wars creator, ringgangradio.com. Yes. Yes, sir. The ring gang in the building, as always, man. So, yeah, so today, you know, uh, so we're going to start off with some non-boxing shit, you know. You know, so we're going to switch up gears a little bit, as we do from time to time. You know, um, as we all know, this week, the weekend, um, the 22nd film in the in the esteemed Marvel Cinematic Universe, Avengers Endgame, was just released. So, naturally... You know, myself and LB, you know, we, I know, you know, besides being, you know, boxing heads, we are also comic book heads, you know what I'm saying? So, we, so we've done seeing, well, and myself, I've seen every fucking movie in the cinema, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe going back to 2008, you know? So, so by this time, I'm well invested in the franchise, you know? Yeah, I've seen them all just about except for, what, Ant-Man 2? You just see Ant-Man 2? I mean that shit on Netflix, man. But nigga, it's Ant Man two, bro. Come on. I mean, I mean it did. I mean Ant Man two does. I mean it, some of it does tie into into um, Infinity Wars and Endgame too. That's- yeah, it does. I mean I seen little bits and pieces to. You know I mean like that shit playing in the background, but I didn't watch it. Watch it. Like that's the only one I ain't, you know watch. Like, but wow. you know it's Ant Man. Hey, you know, hey, I mean, they still managed to make a very coherent movie about them. So I enjoyed both Ant-Man movies. I mean, it's not like fucking Dark World or even worse, fucking Iron Man 3, which pissed me off, you know. So. Yeah, it was definitely better than Iron Man 3, but I can't say it was better than any of the Thors. Nah, I can't say that. Yeah. And if, ironically, Dark World is probably the closest... Uh, you know, closest to actually comes to actually really nailing Thor and the characters around Thor in the actual comics. It's yes. just something. We, it was probably even one of the part one of the darker, if not the darkest, of those movies too. <laughs> but you know, fuck all that. You know, fuck Dark World. You know, for now. You know, but yeah, you know, we we are well invested in these movies. Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I still have memories of being in Connecticut in one of the theaters in Milford, Connecticut, watching Iron Man. You know, and be like, oh shit, this is some new shit right there. And you know, this is probably in the same year that um that the dark that Dark Knight got released too, I believe. So it's just like, oh shit, 2008 was you know kicked off some some real good shit for comic book movies. Although I think Dark Knight got more steam than Iron Man, but that was a slow burn right there because you know DC unfortunately you know lost its momentum a while ago. Well, Marvel flourish uh, flourished. So yeah, you know we're all excited about Avengers Endgame. It's like you know you see all the see all the trailers on YouTube and shit like that. You know, and at first you're like, you know, damn, this shit is like it's it's real vague. Like you don't know what this is. And I think the one trailer like that- the holiday, <laughs> it's like Avengers <laughs> weekend. That that's what that shit felt like. Right? Yeah. I think I think probably the one that really got me hyped was for for was this trailer that was released during this year's Super Bowl, this shitty ass Super Bowl that we watched with the Patriots and the Rams disgracing themselves on my television. You know, but the trailer for it after they raced during, during the game, you know, was thumbs up. And then of course I kept on repeating uh one of the one of the from the from one of the phrases from the trailers, you know, whatever it takes. Because they have like five different characters to beat that shit. And I was like I was like, oh shit, whatever it takes. I'm like, damn this shit this feels like the stakes are high in this motherfucker. So like, really invested. Yeah, exactly. Nigga. I was just like, oh shit. So when they was like, when they're all serious each other, it's like whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And then you see them walking all solemnly, like whatever it takes. All of them repeating that shit. 
So I was like, oh damn, this is this is on point. So yeah, you know, and then you're, they were talking about, I remember I got my ticket at least a month before the movie came out. And I have never done this for any of the movies, not even for Affinity War, you know. Wow. So, damn, this shit was really serious for y'all. Like I literally like just went to the mall, you know, found parking, got a ticket, and just watch the movie. Like, niggas is like getting this shit a month in advance. Like, I I usually don't, but I, I got OD was like, cause there was like, oh damn, like you might not be able to find. And honestly, legitimately, like, I mean, I, I, I saw, I've seen it twice. Cause I, I went and I saw it earlier today too. And I, I, I didn't do it, I was in advance. And I went to this, I went to this joint that's about 35 minutes from my home that where they have movies for $6, you know? And I'm just like all day, every day. So I was like, oh damn, man, even that was like near pack. You know, I almost I almost had to sell for one of them shitty seats up front <laughs> to watch it, which would have been a pain in the ass. Um so yeah, I was so paranoid, but yeah, it's legitimately like I know some of my peoples were like, Yeah, like, you know, there were no seats, like, you know, I have to go watch this on a Saturday and a Sunday, you know, and you know, spoilers were going out left and right. Cause there was a, I guess there was a screening in Saudi Arabia, or something like that. So some clips got released, cause no, you know, honestly, no one had any clue of what this shit was gonna be all about, you know. And then all of a sudden, you saw, I, I only saw one spoiler, one spoiler, you know. And that was, and that was by accident, you know, cause they started loading them shit up to YouTube, and then they had to like, I, I then had to put filters all on my, my website browser. Uh, just, just, just to make sure I didn't see that shit. <laughs> like they were spoiling yeah, yeah. shit. I mean, they were spoiling shit even in YouTube videos that weren't even comic book related. That's, that's how that's how that's how serious that shit was. <laughs> you know, but um. So uh, yeah, uh, y'all listening to this right now. I hope y'all seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, as, yeah, as part part this, because the following after this now we are going to be talking about the movie because we figure right now. A movie like this, I mean, it's done, done did a billion right now for a weekend, and it's it shattered. It's like 350 million for domestically in one weekend, which is out, which is unbelievable. So, we figure if all you motherfuckers out there just are saying this, then you know we, it's no use trying to be trying to be coded about this. So, yeah. there's gonna be some spoilers. So, if you don't want us to talk about this movie, any plots of the movie, characters, any of that shit. You just stop now. You go to our other videos, you know, and you know, and uh, enjoy yourself. But if you haven't seen them, if you haven't, if you but if you don't care about spoilers or you've seen the movie like we have, continue to listen. All right, I got you. I gave you a little pause so you, you know, so you can get up out of there if you don't want to listen to the spoilers. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all got your drinks ready, your blends, whatever. You know, you got your little moscato, got your little malt liquor. Yeah, you, you little Heineken and all that shit ready. Like, go into this now. Yeah, so I mean, I saw I saw that shit Thursday, 7 p.m. Got off work early at three, and it's like I didn't even go to the gym that day. You know, that's how serious that shit was. You know, I'm brolic, so I was like, it's it's not it's a must that I go to this gym. You know, maintain my physique. But um, but this was Avengers Endgame, man. Can't I can't I can't I can't uh. No, I, I can't. I, I can put it aside for one day. LB, man, kick this off, man. Uh, Avengers Endgame, man. What did you think of it? It was dope. Um, I, I don't think... I, I mean, I'm not, like, super impressed, blown away like apparently a lot of people are. Mm-hmm. I actually enjoyed and, you know, I, I thought Infinity War was better the uh, part one of this whole continuation uh, story arc. Mm-hmm. But it was a, a good movie as far as wrapping shit up. Oh, yeah. I mean, if there's one thing that this movie did was wrap up some arcs. It wrapped up um, Captain America, you know, in a way that I was like, this is... Uh, this is it. Captain America's arc was wrapped up perfectly. I mean, if you've watched the Captain America movies, we all know, and obviously you follow the stories, you know, he's a man, you know, that's out of his time. 
you know, he's from he's from the forties and he created from the movies, he crashed into ice and he survived 70 years simply because he had the super soldier serum in the system and in most of the movies was just him trying to adjust to life and everything that he know that he once knew that are gone so in avengers endgame um i i think this was the best out of the wrap-ups you know it was nice that in the end they were like okay someone has to someone has to um, put the stones back into where they originally were using their time traveling device okay guys I just said a spoiler so if you guys if you still if you still want to listen you still want to listen press stop and get up out of here go do one of the boxing videos <laughs> <laughs> so hey, they, they already know man just keep keep it going man just let it out man. <laughs> so yeah no obviously they, they you know at the end of the movie um, you know, they had a time traveling device using the pin particles and, and other stuff like that. And, um, you know, he was, he was, um, supposed to retreat, uh, set this, um, put back the stones. And, but when he came back, you know, he didn't come back as, you know, as everyone expected him to come back. He came back as an old, old man, you know, I mean, he came back sitting on the bench and then he did something that I actually saw actually I saw a reaction online that most people did not like for what you know for some reason. Uh, Captain America, you know, when he came back was uh, what happened is he remained in the past and he married Peggy Carter, who we also know from the from the Captain America movies as well as the Agents of Shield show, and decided to remain in the past to live out their life. So why he came back in about five minutes or whatever from where he was, you know, five, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever was like 50 something, 60 years, something like that nature. So he came back an old man with his Captain America shield. And what he did at the end, the last scene, is he passed the shield on to Falcon, Sam Wilson. Uh, so this pretty much is the passing of the torch that wrapped up Captain America's arc. And then most likely will start a new arc with Falcon as the new Captain America. Now me, you know, I'm, I'm a black man, so I saw this and I clapped because I thought it was gonna be Bucky that was gonna get that shield. You know, so I was like. And then, but unfortunately online, it seemed like, you know, there's some people who didn't, who didn't necessarily like the fact that a white man passes on Captain America shield to a black man, uh, a black, uh, you know, Sam Falcon. Uh, I'm, uh, so, damn, we, we, we American too, like damn. I mean, part of me wishes I, I, I could be uh, surprised, but the, the one thing about the comic book world too, on some occasions is, you know, there is some, you know, there's there's racism in there too. It's, you know, you got you got a lot of incels in there that don't leave their basements who probably have ne never touched a woman before, nothing like that. And they get bitter about life and, and as the, you know, as they see it. You know, and uh, you know they get silly ideas in their heads, and they have to they have to find places to vent. The most bullshit things to vent, and that was one of the things that was vented a lot. You know, fucking morons. But you know that was a great that was a great way to wrap up the arc. Um, and of course, the other arc that was wrapped up was Iron Man's arc. Um, Iron Man by far was, and has been the MVP of the MCU. He, his movie, uh, they kind of, but this, hold on, but let me let me slow you down, right? It's like they they kind of forced that on him, though. Like, like I, I feel like the real people champ always been Captain America. Like, he's had the best damn movies out of everybody. True. He, all his movies, his origin movie was the best, and uh, it was good. His second movie was better, and then the third movie was like blew that shit out, out the water like yeah i mean the origin movies is it, it, there's an argument with the origin because like the iron man's origin movie was on point as well as the guardian of, as a uh, guardian of the galaxy's origin movie. it was like the the marvel version of robocop man like <laughs> dr strange origin was probably the best the origin if, if, if i was to say the three best origins gotta be strange yes you know yeah. um what, what, what was the one we we were just arguing damn why did it was uh, it was iron man guardian of the galaxies and then and then and dr strange 
Oregon. Uh, Captain America up there too, man. Like yeah, no, Captain America. Surprisingly, that one was not popular. And I thought, shit, that's. I mean, I, yes. yo, I don't know what it was like in real life. Like, I know people fucked with it, but when I went online, it's like people was just like, eh. I with mean, the pace and I don't know. Like, I thought it was a solid ass movie. Like, yeah, it, it, really, it really was. Like, I mean, it was. I mean, it, it, and trust me, it wasn't even that much different from the comics. You know, that was that was the thing. Like, it was pretty straightforward. I thought they did a great job with that. You know, but I don't know what they were expecting. You know, like... Yeah. Remember Captain America, you know, I guess because we, we old school fans, we kind of knew what to expect from Captain America, so I guess to see everything done perfectly, you know, we was like, okay, where everybody else is like, Captain America, what's so great about Captain America? He's like a regular guy, like... Except, you know... Like, <laughs> they, they, they needed, like, the, they it's like, they needed to start adding Black Widow and Nick Fury and, and Bucky <laughs> And Falcon, it's like they had to bring all these niggas in to just make people care about his movies, but he always stood on the top of all them shits, man. So, I mean, I feel you with the whole Tony Stark since the MVP, but it's like they just, I feel like they kind of make it that way with that shit. Like, every movie, it, 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 it's like niggas gotta depend on Tony Stark to save the day, like, even in this shit. So, <laughs> right. Right, and, uh, but, I mean, regardless, though, he, I mean, he's probably been, his character Iron Man has been probably the most of the movies, by far. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, dudes and everything. I mean, Robert Downey Jr., salute to Robert Downey Jr., I mean, I mean, that one, I mean, that that was a career resurgence for him, I mean, because, you know, I mean, if you know that dude was a very troubled guy, troubled, talented guy. And an Iron Man gave him life to the point where now, if they ever try to reboot this motherfucker's character, it's gonna be pretty hard to do. You know, because now you're associated with them. But um, Iron Man's arc would be wrapped up as he would be the one to wield the gauntlet with the stones in it. He was the one that managed to take in the fu- in the in the final, you know, final moments of the battle. You know, he got the gauntlet and managed and snapped his fingers. And in doing so, he was able to defeat uh, Thanos and the army, who promptly uh, disagreed, disagreed. But unfortunately for him, he was mortally wounded by do it by snapping his fingers with the gauntlet. And uh, unfortunately, he would pass away. You know, um, the fun, the wild thing about that scene was there were people crying in the theater at that scene. Like you could, because you could hear like when he died, like you could hear a pin drop. And then all of a sudden, when they showed the funeral scene, and, you know, they showed everybody. Like I mean, they showed everyone. They even, they even showed the kid from Iron Man three up in that funeral scene. Man, everyone was all falling. You could hear people crying in the theater. LB, like that that shit touched people. You know, I, I, I was like, oh, damn. damn like, really, really? It's like, I don't know. I'd never be at the movie theaters where I guess niggas be taking it on some serious shit. It's like the most I'll get, like, motherfuckers just clapping and everything. And, you know, you got the nerds out there who, you know, giggle at every little dialogue. But other than that, it's like, it's a regular, you know, movie experience. Still a dope movie. Still a good movie. But, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going way over the top with reactions and shit. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if someone had told me that the people cry, I'd be like, yeah. But the fact that I actually experienced that shit in the theater, like you can hear the sniffling, <laughs> like <laughs> I was like, you can hear that shit. I was just like, damn, you know, I'm over here. Like the show, the show's kind of making me uncomfortable, you know, having all these white people around me crying and shit. Like, <laughs> I was just like, I was like, it's a movie, goddamn, you know. Although I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've teared up at movies before. But you, you know, but I held my own. You know, fuck that. You know, I'm not gonna be out here boo. <laughs> Life make a nigga tear up, man. Ain't no fucking movies and shit, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, but uh, but yeah, you know, Tony was wrapped up, and am I forgetting another arc that was wrapped up? Ah, mm, uh, let me see. I mean, the Guardians got a little wrap up. I don't want to say it's a wrap up because I mean, there, there there's gonna be a third movie on it. I, I think what it is, it, it got, it, it, but it's like they have closed. It's like 
they have like a close. It's like they kind of closed it, but they kind of gave it like a new lane because because now they added Thor, and so it's like they're moving forward to their next their next phase. Is what I pretty what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No. Okay. I get. I get. I get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy now has Thor in the equation. Um, you know, Thor is you know, Thor and Quill will be. I'm sure will be integral parts of. Guardians of the Galaxy three. Oh, yes, there was there was an arc, another arc that I'm missing, the Stan Lee cameo arc. Um, for for um, for what we know, I mean, prior to his death, Stan Lee filmed a whole bunch of cameos, um, all at once, back to back to back, like like Infinity War and Ant Man and Captain Marvel. All you know, he did. He did like four or five of them. These are like among his last ones. And reportedly, this may be reportedly his cameo in in um, Endgame is his final one. It's still up in the air about the next one, Spider-Man: Far From Home, if he's gonna be in there or not. But in the MCU, you know, without Sony being involved, this is his final one. And that one, his cameo got an applause i got it got laughter out of me you know um you know but i because you know i have a fascination with them seeing the with them using the de-aging technology and they used it in captain marvel um too for nick fury and you know and uh the dude and one of the agents in there uh and they used it on on um they used it on uh, stan lee uh, during the part where they went back to the 70s, yes, where um, where Captain America goes back to uses the, um, I mean uses the time travel machine to go back to the 70s, and uh, steal pin particles. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, the pin particles. And in that one, Stanley is the age like he. I mean, honestly, if you ever seen pictures of Stanley in the 70s, you know, dude dressed like old dis, you know, old disco Godfather. You know, um, fucking black hair, big ass, you know, big ass glasses, and do is like, hey man, make love, not war. And then there's a woman next to him talking about, yeah, that got that got that got an applause out of the theater for me. I was like, damn man, where I mean, we just may have seen probably the last Stan Lee cameo in these movies, man. And the cameos have always the cameos have been a big part of the MCU. And, and then some other, and then some other movies outside outside of the MC, M- MCU as well. So I was just like that. If that if that was one part that I felt sad about, it was that part. But you know, you know, it went. It was very random, and the guy laughed out of me. So uh, yeah, man, salute salute the great Stan Lee for that. Um. So yes, uh, the movie started out, of course, with I mean, they did. You know, they had the Infinity Stones and everything like that. We all know Thanos used the Infinity Stones to wipe out half of the universe. Um, Nebula and Tony Stark were in space. And this is where I think one of the flaws from the from the movie took place. Like it was like it's a three it was a three hour movie. Like an hour of it was just slow. Like very, very slow. Like it starts yeah, that's it. That, that hurt the fucking score, my yeah. nigga. Like, yeah. honestly, honestly, like, like you got a three-hour movie and it's like only one hour of real action, and right. it's like that doesn't sit well with me because it's like a similar thing happened in the damn Batman versus Superman where they just let everything happen at the fucking end, and you had to sit through a whole, you know, long, but you know. That's the only thing similar to it. I mean, Avengers is a way better fucking movie. So right. That's the only right. thing I'm still comparing it to, but, but it was I'm just, not gonna be good with that shit. Like Yeah, but it, it, it was still, I mean like I mean like I didn't mind when they had Captain Marvel rescue um Tony Stark and Nebula from wandering in space because they were about a couple hours away from dying. And um of course, you know, they she she brings them back to the Avengers headquarters, where it's just like you know it was War Machine and, and Rocket and Captain America and Hulk, who is now Professor Hulk, too. And 
that that in itself, the Professor Hulk is a is another minor thing that I was not really feeling all that well because I think they just forced it upon like, oh hey this motherfucker is Professor Hulk and they and they have Ain't that to- like the comic though like where he kind of gets gray and he gets like smarter like he's less violent and shit yeah yeah it is it is in the comics but I just think they could have had a better introduction to it you know what I'm saying like. And fuck I, all that. The real, the real complaint with Hulk is, and for this whole movie, he was underutilized. Not only that, not only that. The biggest complaint is he never ran it back with Thanos. Yes, he did not. No, he did not. That's the big. You could have had this nigga do jack shit the whole movie. If I'd have seen this man throw one fade at Thanos, I'd have been like, okay. Like I, I don't know, man. Like, ah, like. It's like the more I really think about the movie, it just because a lot of people have been asking me, like, yo, so is it worth the three hours? Worth the three hours? And I've been telling niggas no, but it's still a good movie. Right. I mean, it's worth the three hours if you've invested a lot of time in the movie. Like, we have. We both have. So that's the thing. Like, we were going to see it. I mean, that was no question. I still don't really feel like it's... Like, I guess it's worth it, but it wasn't, like... Uh, like I, I feel like maybe it was only worth half of the three hours, Ooh, right? Because I, cause it, it, like I said, I mean they could probably have done a better job of wrapping things up. Like some people, like, I think, I think, I think, that calls for action sequences throughout the movie, right? Like they could have wrote it, like wrote the story, like the pacing a lot better, like especially when they were trying to go into how. Everybody was living their life and you know doing different shit like right. Yo, y'all could have put more action into that shit. Like I see yeah, the whole time they did that shit, but yeah. And the funny thing is that what you just described, I hated. I that was the one part I hated in Age of Ultron. You know, I hate because they did the same thing. Like you know, they were just trying to live in their lives, but they was they spent too much time on that shit. You know, yeah. Like, especially you when start. Oh, like. Oh, like that show was kind of it was it was a pain to get through because it's like I mean the dialogue was cool and everything. And yeah, no, I had no problem with the dialogue. It's just like certain scenes, like, and it's like I felt like whenever they got got the shit, got shit rolling, they would stop it. Like Captain Marvel was, like, yo, and man, that made me think Captain Marvel. I never even got to see her movie, so I gotta add that to Ant Man too. <laughs> but whenever her, Whenever she appeared on the screen, it's like she just took over. So it's like, damn, like y'all niggas should have used more Captain Marvel. Like, let Hope do some shit. Like these niggas legit made Ant Man an MVP. <laughs> right. You know, but the thing with uh, the thing with the beginning is like one thing that they did in the beginning. Obviously, they actually went to where Thanos was chilling or whatever. Uh, yeah. But you know, in there, they, 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 they you know they. You know, Thanos destroyed the stones after using them, which, you know, saw him, he looked like, you know, he looked like he got hit by a bus or some shit like that. And then they end up killing him. Uh, Thor. That whole yeah. shit right there was weak. Like, man, like, they, you see, this is the thing. They, they missed up, they messed up another opportunity to have action. Like, I mean, first of all, that already supposed to be like, you know, that dude, you know, even without the Infinity Stones and shit. So, like, the nigga can't even put up no fight against these niggas. He gets bodied, right. like... Yeah, like, I mean... I mean, I would have rather seen, like, Thanos hand out some fades and then escape on some shit. You know, and then that was like, okay... You know, or, or just get overwhelmed, like... <laughs> you know, but at least... At least show, like, okay, like, he's, you know... He ain't no scrub. Like, these, they ran after that nigga, like, um... They found him chilling on some Saddam Hussein shit, like. Yeah, they showed him like flowers. I was like, they, they showed him like you know some farmer shit, you know, you know, just trying to live. Yeah, living the fucking damn um, Vito Corleone yeah. garden. Yeah, you know I mean, he chilling. And I was like, they damn. Like, right up on him. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you guys, y'all could have done something way better. Yeah, because like, yeah, that. That could have been the action sequence that that set the whole movie off. Right. Then I wouldn't have minded if y'all had forty minutes of niggas damn talking and bullshit. But it's like y'all set y'all do that shit. Y'all give us a little tease. They're not even a real tease. Y'all just be like, here, boom, like take that. 
Right. And then a whole two hours later, we're like finally getting back into some action. Like, right. Like, I, don't, I don't know. Like, that's why I can't. The, the movie not perfect to me. Hell no. No, no. It's not. It looks because after that one, then they go, you know, they go five years later in, you know, from that event. You know where they, everyone's just trying to get back, you know, to what they used to be. Um, Ant Man. Now, th- and this is gonna be another spoiler. This will be an Ant Man spoiler uh, for the second movie. Now, the end of Ant Man Two. You know, Ant Man is going into the quantum realm to retrieve some of that energy, uh, where they have, you know, the original Ant Man, Hank Pym, and of course. You know the original wasp and then the new wasp you know and they were all in you know and they were supposed to pull them out after some time but the snap got rid of them everyone and but ant-man was in the realm so they showed him actually being trapped in the quantum realm and he was stuck in there for five for five years so how he gets out is I guess the quantum realm was in some warehouse or whatever, and some rat, <laughs> some rat happened to press like the lever or whatever, and out comes out comes Ant Man. So I was like, I was like, huh? Eh, well, I can I can fuck with that at least, you know. I thought I thought I thought I thought, I thought it would be a little bit more creative, but eh, rat, you know, rat. make some random ass shit happen. Yeah, a rat, you know, a rat down there, spinning him out. Yeah. Fine, whatever. <laughs> but um, I guess now this is where this is where you get the background on the time travel, where he explained that he was in there. For him, it felt like five hours instead of the, instead of the five years. And then from there, he was like, "Oh, the quantum realm, he can do some time travel shit." Because from there, when he came out, when he got out of the quantum realm, it was five years. He went to his home and his daughter age five years. I mean, she's no longer a kid. She wasn't a kid. She was, you know, she was a teenager and everything like that. So from there, he goes to, um, he goes to the Avengers and he starts, you know, and he starts, and he starts uh, babbling, you know, stuff like, hey, you know, maybe time travel, we can do this. You know, we can do this time travel. And then they, him and, I think it was him and Hulk, right? LB, him, Hulk and Captain America. Yeah. Yeah, they start doing their initial initial experiments in there, you know, just to just to try out this time travel theories that he was doing, and of course, they did it like a couple of times, like if him as a baby, him as an adult, you know, this is where a lot of the jokes, you know, a lot of the the quote unquote jokes of the movie came in, him, you know, as a I mean, kid. Ant-Man, Ant-Man and Thor kind of made the movie as far as dialogue goes. Like, oh yeah, for sure. Like, if you take Batman and Thor out of the movie, the movie, the talking points would have just been kind of weak. Like, like they made it entertaining. Like, all their parts, Dad and, you know, you know, spending uh, Rocket, the you know, Rocket Raccoon, you know, so uh, I, I feel you. Like, it's, it's a long ass movie, bro. Like, I don't even want <laughs> to explain every detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's very, but at least because the time travel part is, is an actual major part of the movie. So, yeah, so yeah, so that's how we got, so, you know, it's between that, it's, it's because of Ant-Man, that's how they started working on the time travel, and then from there, uh, you know, they went to Tony Stark, who's chilling with Pepper and his daughter, and is not really doing no Avenger thing, but, you living know. Living his best life. Yeah, he's living his best life, but, you know, when it was him, you know, you bring a problem to him, he's gonna start th- overthinking that shit. So he perfects the time travel, um, and partly because also of the reason, because he reflected on Spider-Man, Peter Parker, in the movie, where, whereas in Infinity Wars, near the end of the first fight with Thanos, the snap, you know, Spider-Man was uh, erased with the snap. So that was pretty much his big, that was the big point in actually trying to master this time travel. Um, and then after that, of course, and uh, they get they get Thor, who surprisingly is they made him drunk and overweight, and that's where Albie was talking about the dialogue. And we do was just yeah, it, dude, dude, dude was a dude was a, a vagabond, <laughs> you know, with some of the cats from his planet, you know, 
he was from the other so some Asgardians. So yeah, I mean, I was like, I, was, I thought they were. I mean, in the trailers, I mean, he looked like he was like normal or shit like that. But they really made this dude like a drunken bum. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that was some shit right there. I think, and then um, he's gonna be a big <laughs> Halloween costume for for all the dads out there come Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> washed, washed up Thor. Yeah, washed Thor. Who's not, not doing anything? And then afterwards, also they get uh, Hawkeye, who turned into, you know, this uh, vigilante of some sort, killing random motherfuckers. And that yeah, it's like he was off in the whole yakuza gig. Like shit felt like I was watching Deadpool or Punisher or something. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, dude, yeah, dude went off the rails because the snap erased his family. Like that, that was the opening scene, if I'm not mistaken, because the snap erased his whole family. So dude went on a, the dude snapped and went on a killing spree, you know, killing Yakuza and everything like that. So they met, and then, you know, so they managed to retrieve him from killing and all that type of stuff. And then they used the time travel to go back to New York, where their first Avengers, uh, where the first Avengers movie took place, the first battles and stuff like that. No, no, I I like to add that this whole part where they started going back in time and try to right the wrongs and get the the gems in the Infinity Gems, the the Infinity Stones and all that shit, like, I thought that was dope that how they integrated a lot of past movies and different scenes and, you know... The Hell Hydra, like you know, shit like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, I thought that shit was dope. Like, I honestly felt like they needed to make that. That should have been more of the whole movie itself. I agree, and, absolutely agree. Fucking, you know, a little twenty-minute part, like or whatever it took. Like, it just it has to be like the, the pacing in this movie is like maybe one of the worst I've seen like for, for such an epic movie where you know you're, you're looking for closure like the only time I can remember them pacing being this bad is um the fucking uh, slave movie uh, The Birth of a Nation uh, with, oh yeah that one was uh, yeah that one that, that one was, that one was trying to watch I supported it because I wanted but it was trying. Two hour movie, a two hour movie that's about a slave rebellion. And y'all only have the slave rebellion at the last, what, 20 minutes? Right. Like, come on. Like, how the fuck it even, like, who who okayed that shit to even get that far and niggas ain't say, damn. Like, we. And the shit wasn't even, and the shit, and the shit wasn't even that, it wasn't even like violent. Like, I, was, I was expecting some real, see some real graphic violence. That shit was. L- light as a motherfucker. I mean, yeah, come on. So, like, this shit was a real bit disappointment. Now, I- I'm not saying, you know, Avengers was a disappointment because it wasn't, but it had some disappointing parts. But I just felt like the-, the great parts are great and the bad parts are bad. Like, but, you know, overall, like, like, I guess, like, like, like how you were doing earlier, um, the first hour is the woe is me. I can't believe it. Thanos beat our ass. What are we going to do? Let's just, you know, resign the fate. Let's be some losers. Let's be sad. The second hour of the movie is damn. Okay. We got a little hope. Let's do something, guys. Yeah, let's get the band back together. Third hour of the movie is, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This shit it look like it's going to work. Like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Get this nigga, that nigga too. Okay, bring these niggas back. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hot potato, hot potato. Oi, hold on, hold on, hold on. And it, it's just little shit that just made me laugh about it. Like, yeah. how they the black person to damn play football with the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, y'all niggas think y'all sleep. <laughs> You you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do, yo. Black- <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you ain't let no, you ain't let nobody else run like that. <laughs> no, no. But that shit, that shit was funny though. It was, but the the whole climax, the last battle, I, I swear was just just off the fucking chain. Like, yeah, it almost felt like it could have been longer. Like, 
Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, let's say, if she, let's say, I mean, the movie should us say the time travel part, you know, when they travel back to New York City, they travel, you know, to the late 70s, you know, the, you know, where she had the shield headquarters in the 70s and stuff like that. They retrieved like the stones. And even within that part, there was another, there was an arc that was created because Loki at the time was, because uh, they failed to, I think it was the space, it was the space stone. And Loki, was at the point was captured, but since they failed to get the space stone, Loki used it to escape, which sets up another arc for him. Yeah, you know. So in that, and I thought that I thought that was really dope too. And even in that scene, they, they also had a scene, you know, where Iron Man meets um, meets his father. You know. Oh was- God, man, dude, that was the most long, cringeworthy, drawn out scene, like. Mm-hmm. These niggas, it's like they were just trying to make shit like too emotional. Like, right? It was just forced. Like that shit. I'm just like, okay, we get it. Like, yeah, you, you know, that's your pops and everything. Like, okay, let's go, nigga. Like, you see Captain America in the cut. Like, come on, bro, let's go. Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah, like, that part that could have been that, could, that part could have been like maybe a three minute, you know, I mean three minutes, like two minutes or whatever, you know, because then. Yeah. then I mean, uh, personally, like when dude talked about, uh, is he asked him if he was a beatnik? That should have been, that should have been the end of that scene because that should have had me rolling when he when he asked him if he was a beatnik. Yeah, like I, honestly, I felt like you could trim the movie by a good forty minutes. Yeah, and then add for add forty minutes of action. <laughs> yeah. yeah, even even if even if you fucking trim the movie down. About if you trim about thirty minutes off the movie, I feel it. It doesn't come off as bad because now the action stands out stands out a little more. Right. But when you have so much dead, dead, it's just like how when we, you know, those dead gaps. You know, just like when we watch boxing and we're like, okay, this nigga's not really doing nothing. He's just circling him, but then you see one guy who. He's always flicking that jab out there, look like he's trying to get the distance and control him. You know, you you got something to watch, and, and and that's what I feel like Avengers needed, man. Like, so so shit. Let me let me ask you this: What do you score the movie out of your one through ten? Uh, if I well, I score the movie, I would score it. I'll say it's a solid seven. So, like, like I said, because it was when I say seven is like that. I mean, when it, actually when it did pop off was good, and that aspect of like the time travel was good, and um, you know the, time, the, the at least how they explained it. Um, but I also thought too that they they focused on too many things that that were too they shouldn't have, like such as who would sacrifice himself for the damn soul stone. Uh, I thought that was too long and drawn out. Yeah, like oh my goodness, like. And then the niggas no fucking power to them, acting like <laughs> they about to sacrifice the, the biggest deal in the world, man. Like y'all niggas, come on. Right, and then of course, I mean, there was the part in there where you know Hulk uses the stones. You get they get all the stones, I believe, and then you know they they restore all the people that fan that Thanos disintegrated. And then of course they use more t- and then they use more time travel stuff to do to, to get at Thanos, but Thanos kinda of, kinda of figures out their plan simply because of the, the two nebulas. Because I mean, because there were there were two movies, there were two parts in the movies where past and present characters in a, you know, in a, a pretty much uh they interact with each other. Nebula was one, she was the main suspect in that one. And then there was Captain America who had a brief one. The, the Captain America versus Captain America fight. That shit came out of nowhere. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> shit made me feel like uh, watching those uh, Marvel vs. Capcom games. Like, right. it, that, it, that shit was actually kind of... That was a low-key dope moment in that uh, movie. Like, that yeah, Captain but... America vs. Captain. Like, when he was fighting with the shields and shit. Like, like you, you notice, like, the Captain America, the real MVP, like... Uh, the, every Avengers movie, he always has like the most lit, rawest part. He always does the best against the boss. Like he was going head up the fade for fade for that with, with Thanos. Shit, nigga held his own with Thanos more than Hulk did. Mm-hmm. 
Hulk got bodied and he he was ducking Thanos for damn near two movies. Right? <laughs> Dude, at least Thor wanted to run it back. Damn it. Fucking Thanos kids be wanting to run it back, but damn, this nigga Hulk was like, yeah, like, like, ah, so like me, if, if I had to score it, I think I was going to give it an eight. Mm. You know, it, it's definitely, you know, you know, the, 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 the raw parts are raw, like, you know, but, but it, it's, it's not part perfect. Yeah, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a little bit disjointed, which I give it a seven, like it, it will never get lower than a seven. And I've watched it twice. And if I watch it again, it might go up to maybe seven and a half or whatever. But it will never get lower than seven because, like I said, it was just, it, it, like I said, I mean, they had to wrap up 20 something movies, 21 movies in this movie, in, in this particular movie. And um, with that, though, they made, they, made, they made a bigger deal than what it was. Like, like I, me personally, I hope DC is watching all of this and they're looking at it like, hmm. Now we gonna we gonna really like we gonna learn from their mistakes and shit that they did. Cause I would love to see like a Justice League movie that's on the level of Infinity Wars. Man, I I, I think it's too. I think that should be sell. I mean, they're gonna have to. I mean, the only way the only way DC will probably is that they got to start making some R-rated shit. You know, having nah, like, it can happen, but this is the thing. You got to give it time. I'm not asking for this. I'm not saying you got to give it time. Or, or next year. But I just feel it. like with, because you're going to need something to fill that void. And the DC Justice League is the only thing I can see that as a comic book movie, I'm talking about the sequel. Like, I feel like that's the only thing I could really live up to what we all got accustomed to as far as what um, Civil War Fucking uh, uh, Guardians yeah. Two, uh, uh, Endgame, Infinity War is like those were like the biggest Marvel movies as far as we're talking about the the, the powers, the special effects, over the top, even Thor Ragnarok up there. Mm. So you you know, I don't see nothing else like on the horizon that's gonna fuck with uh, those uh, Avengers movies and shit like that. Not anytime soon. So you know, I feel like just like if. If uh, if DC looking at this is like okay, you know, don't try to emulate them niggas. You know, do they seem like they might have had they they got they formed on point. You know, like we said, Shazam was dope, and they're heading in the right direction. You said uh, Aquaman was dope, mm -hmm. so I feel like if they could build up to their second phase and give us a real good like you know a Justice League movie, like you know have Dark Side as the Dark Seed as the villain. You know, really get this shit on point, then yeah, they could they could fill that void. You know, it's gonna take time, but you know, yeah, time and also also the big thing is they have to make people care about the individual movies before they start caring about a collective movie, and that was what yeah. made Justice League not pop off the way it did because the individual movies were not all that great, and they rushed it too. So you know, you can't yeah. you know you can't have. Have a Wonder Woman movie, and then four months later, you Justice League movie. Like, ah, doesn't yeah. You know, unless there's, unless there was a significant so ties through each movie, which there was not. Yeah, it's like y'all think it literally was like fuck it. It mm. gave y'all Batman, gave y'all super. We gave y'all Superman, then we gave y'all Superman and Batman. Who Wonder Woman in that motherfucker too? <laughs> yeah, we and even, even had Batman had a brief cameo on Suicide Squad. Which is probably the only time, really. Yeah, so it's like there's no rush. It's like just take your time and build this shit. It's like y'all niggas not Marvel. Like mm -hmm. y'all gonna have to do certain things that they can't do, and y'all gotta excel at the shit that they couldn't do. Right, so that's how I look at it. Because even the Marvel movies themselves didn't really pop off like that automatically. Like everyone liked, you know, Iron Man. Iron Man was cool. You know, Iron, Man, Iron Man was, but I mean, the Thors were not popular. When they were out in the theater, they were not. Um, yeah. The first one was not. I, didn't, I honestly didn't really, really like that for all that much either. It's not the it worst. Took a while. Like a lot of people, movies didn't really get on until the second time. Like they second movie. Like Thor. No one really liked Thor until his third movie. Iron Man. People like Iron Man one. People yeah. thought Iron Man two was okay. Iron Man three was trash. So his series is already like average Thor right. series 
is about average or maybe but, a little bit above average. Right, but it, it, Hulk a, only had one movie. <laughs> yeah, and that's a whole bunch of. Uh, I mean, the thought that Hulk movie is actually not pretty, but of course the the politics behind why there was never never, uh, never an individual another individual Hulk movie. That it's a it's a headache. I don't even like to explain it. It's so stupid. But since you know Marvel doesn't completely own the character, you know, but um. But yeah, no, it took the Avengers for the Avengers to actually have it pop off. And then from there, you know, like I said, Iron Man 3 and Dark World, they were back to back. And like I said, they were not popular at all. Winter Soldier, however, changed the whole fucking game. The whole game. Winter Soldier. And then after that, you saw an, you saw an uptick in quality um, from that. From you know why? Because... With Captain America, it focused on the hand-to-hand -hand combat and real, real action sequences. A lot of those other comics, pop movies, they focus on powers. And if Marvel has a habit of sometimes, you know, toning down the powers. Mm -hmm. So if you do that in certain shit, the action sequences don't come off right. Like if you look at Thor, like the first beginning of Thor, the first movie, when he's in, uh, I think, Jotunheim, you know, the place where all the, 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 the winter ice ice giants. Yeah. He's going off on that. That's just raw. But then for the rest of the movie, you're like, eh, okay, yeah, yeah, Thor, Thor, regular Thor. Then you fight, then he fights that one, <laughs> that, that one uh, creature at the end. So it's like, it's like Marvel normalizes a lot of the superhero shit, like, it wasn't until like a lot of times their second or third movie where we really saw these dudes go off. Right. Where yeah. where DC was different. Like you see in these niggas that they full powers from the get go. Like right. You watch the Superman Man of Steel, Superman, you know what he do. Aquaman, everybody, fucking. You know what I mean, so it's it's you know so you get different expectations so you know dc need to just keep doing what they doing but look at the mistakes that marvel made and marvel just need to you know tighten up a few things and keep going because they already making history and shit. all right i fuck with them both i just want both to succeed we all do but it just remains to be seen how long it'll take for dc to do its thing um yeah but uh yeah but, but, but at least regarding like the avengers endgame you know, like I said, you know, they us they have to tie up a lot of you know, a lot of movies or whatever. So with you know, like, like I said, with you know, with the Hulk um, snapping his fingers with the gauntlet, restoring every restoring everybody, and then of course you know you have Nebula, the two versions, present day and past day Nebula, trying to kill each other. You know, and and then after that, in the final battle, you know, they got Doctor Strange. Who was restored because of the snap, arriving with people you know, with the other sorcerers, um, the other Avengers, the other Guardians of the Galaxy, and Captain uh, Black Panther, Shuri, Okoye, yeah, you know, they had everyone all up in there. And the only like, people who was missing were the X Men. <laughs> Words. <laughs> like, that's the only thing. Like, yeah, I, I needed to see Wolverine, you know, just get thrown at some somebody and start shooting the fade. Right. You know I mean, I needed to see Nightcrawler teleport and hit Thanos and all types of shit. So it, it'll never compete with a comic book in that sense. No, it will not. But that that part got the biggest. That, that got a big applause in my theater. And then another part that got uh, and I got an uh, applause. And this is the one I was telling you before I saw the spoiler on, is Captain America picking up Thor's hammer. That got a huge, that, that got the biggest applause in the theater. Like people went crazy when he picked up Thor's hammer. You know, it was just like, oh shit, Captain America got Thor's hammer. And then he proceeded to give Thanos you know, some work with that hammer. <laughs> you know. Captain America stay saving the day, man. Like he, he run to the fire, man. Like. I ain't gonna lie, man. PBC need a, a Captain America. Somebody that just ran out of smoke. Well, technically they I do. Mean, they got Jared Heard. My, my bad. I'm sorry. They got Heard. They got Heard. Oh, no, they, they had Badu Jack. Badu Jack is probably is the one that's probably fought better competition than Heard. Or probably the most, actually. You know, among there, you know. 
I mean, you can't. Yeah, but you heard, heard fighting style. He literally runs to the smoke. <laughs> exactly, and catches work. No, sorry, for, <laughs> sorry for the brief deviation. You know, this is you know this like this is how sometimes you know boxing and comic books sometimes they go hand in hand, and we get to make these little uh, you know these little observations. You know, so uh, so yeah, you know, so yes, you know, PBC can could use uh, uh, a Steve Rogers Captain America in their <laughs> in their camp. That remains to be seen. So yeah, you know, the, when the bottle pops off, like everything was just on point. You know, everyone was just handing out work. It was just, it, it was wonderful. The thing is, too, is like there was a lot of people in there that they advertised. Obviously, they had Umbaku in there. You know, they had a whole bunch of other people like Ebony Maw, like the villains group. And the funny thing is, they, like, I mean, they're in it, but they don't have like any dialogue or anything, <laughs> which I thought was actually pretty funny. Um, it just it, it, showed in a mantis. It's like, why would, I mean, they, they had characters in there that were just like, they had, like, they didn't, uh, they, yeah, Bucky was in there too, and it's just like, there was just so much going on, like, they, they didn't even have any dialogue or any standout scenes, other than you could just see them. I felt like this shit could have been longer, like, you honestly yeah. could have put 10 extra minutes on that fight scene. Right, like, they, they could they could have really, they, like, for three hours, they could have really, you know, used it to, to highlight people, you know, highlight certain people, like, at least get people, like, a, a close-up of them actually killing somebody. Yeah, like, like, I mean, think about it, the Lord of the Rings had... They knew how to make a fucking battle be a battle, my nigga. I hated, I hated, the, I hated those movies. Oh, see, damn. Well, fuck you, then, nigga. Shit, I, I can't compare it now, then. What the fuck? So, um, okay, let me, let me see. I uh, one way I can compare this is, um, you know how we fuck with the international movies. You know, you know, I be watching the martial arts flicks and yeah. some of those be like the uh, little uh, war epics. Mm-hmm. And you know, some of them come from Hong Kong, some Korea, whatever. You know, and they'll have movies where they're like war epics. You know, like one one uh, one uh, country try to take over another country, and you know, they have these big extended scenes where you know the armies are fighting each other, like on some Braveheart shit, but just bigger and better now. You know, the Braveheart was dope for its time, but we talking about now, 2019. And you know, excuse me, these, these fight scenes will last for like 45 minutes. Like I'm talking about, if ni- niggas is doing siege towers and all types of shit, like you're getting a real like everybody's fighting. It just it, that's how Infinity War, that's how um, Endgame was. But I just felt like, damn, man, I'm just gonna make that longer. Like I had to sit three hours to, to see this. Like come on. Yeah, it's it's it it just like the, yeah, the build up. Like I said, they should have gotten straight to the point. Minor build up, straight to the point. More action, yeah. more per, more real personalized action. You know, like I said, like, yeah, it's some highlights. <laughs> yeah, some absolute highlights. You know, and, I mean, they gave a few, but you know, it just wasn't enough to me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It wasn't, you know, but the 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 spectacle of it was was uh, fucking ridiculous, though. It was yeah. absolutely it was absolutely ridiculous, and you know, just watching all that shit go down, like everyone was just like, ooh, ah, you know, this is. It's like, yeah, and you know, it's and, and of course, you know, one of the things in the Me Too era, obviously, it's just like you know, having you know, have shown like strong women on the screen, like you know, so they had like literally all the the name women superheroes at one point all you know all ganged up including pepper Potts in her in her own iron iron woman suit you know i was just like of course they would have that in the in this movie yeah it's like <laughs> the shit came off so forced like in my head i'm like damn like so y'all are just waiting around for this moment like come on I'm like no but there, no there there was one other part i didn't mind about all that much but there was one uh, there's one part in the movie, and you probably have to go back in the movie, that I absolutely, I rolled my eyes at. It was um, Cap Support Group, where Dude, actually, that was played by one of the directors, I think it was Joe Russo. You know, Dude was talking about things that were of a um, homosexual nature. You know, I was like, 
because it was you know Cap had some sort of support group and then he and then the dude was talking about dates and stuff like that. I'm just cool up. So like, what the fuck is this? You know, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm listening to it, I was like, holy shit. This motherfucker's talking about getting at like a, a dude. You know, like now I'm not a homophobe in any sense of the word, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's not me. However, though, I'm just weird, weird shit. You know. However, though, it's just having that in the movie, just like that, I was like, what the fuck? You know, it's just like, why was this in the movie? Like it, it, it was just too it was just too random. It's like one of those things like with the other things that we talk about that could have been trimmed out, that could have been trimmed out too. It's just like I mean, they, it was it was a dialogue too. And the funny thing is too, that scene was partially in the trailers, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, it's probably that's probably a serious ass scene. It was serious, all right. <laughs> it was serious, but serious not, waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh man! I mean, that was just uh, to me. I thought. I mean, that uh, to me that was just like an agenda type of thing, having that scene in there. I mean, like, how's it? They're they're also the arcade comic book characters, especially within the X Men universe. There, there are some, you know. But it's just like, why put that scene now in that movie? It it it, 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 it didn't make any sense. It didn't it didn't move anything. You know, the only thing is, it's just Captain America giving a, you know, listening to a dude talking about trying to get at some dude on a date in this support group. Yeah, she was just so fucking forced. Just like, oh my god, like, yeah, <laughs> like you just so much extra shit. Like these niggas, it felt like I was watching a Netflix series. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, the production values that go up all of a sudden. You're like, oh shit, these niggas in outer space. Oh, they about to fight. Oh, this this purple nigga right here. Oh, this nigga here. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. This person, you know, this bitch flying. She got fire around her. Like, that's how that shit was. Like, I'm like, like I'm good. I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm Avengers doubt. I'm Avengers doubt right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, that's how. That's Dope a- movie though. Yeah, I mean that's exactly how I. I mean, I, that's how I was like, I was like, there's so much extra shit in here. It's just like, I think that's probably the reason. Like, even after, I mean, I'll probably watch the movie again. I was like, why I watch it a couple times, but I probably do not want to see an Avengers movie for quite some time after that. Any new ones, and, and I don't think it's gonna be any new ones after that. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of over with comic book movies now unless if you're gonna give me if you get unless you give me an, an infinity wars um silver war man of steel um level of action and comic book mayhem if you don't if you ain't giving me a, on if it's not given to me on that level then i'm good like, I, I don't want to see a superhero drama series like yeah, I'm just good. You know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not coming up because like, there is one more movie and Spider-Man Far From Home, and that one reportedly is the final movie in the Infinity Saga Phase Three movie. At first, it was supposed to be the it was supposed to be the first movie at least that was being reported, but now this one's gonna be the final one, and that one comes out in July. You know, that's like I think it's a couple days before my actual birthday, so. I mean, I fuck with the last Spider-Man, so I'll probably watch this one, but I don't know if I'll be, like, first day or nothing. Yeah, I, I, I don't see it unless, well, it depends. I mean, it, it, I could, to me, it would probably be a birthday present to myself. It would be one of them. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I think I'm going to go and see I might do. I might see it the first night, knowing me. Uh, uh, but at least I'm pretty sure no one will try to spoil that shit, like, everywhere, <laughs> like they did with this movie, you know? Yeah. Because everybody attention whore, and that's what it is. It's like niggas want to be like, oh, I've seen it first, so let me spoil it. Mm-hmm. Like, it ain't serious. Like, like, niggas is amped over this shit. Like, come on. And the niggas who's amped up to spoil it is like even worse. So, like, right. nah, y'all niggas chill with that shit. But like, yeah, as far but- as like thoughts, like, I'm. Movie movie was dope. It's, you know, it's, it's dope, but not perfect. <laughs> Yeah, not perfect at all. Uh, definitely not perfect. And uh, but it, like I said, it it was like I said, it definitely did bring an end to eleven years. You know, eleven years invested in watching these movies, and it's just, it's nuts, it's bananas. Because like I said before that, I mean, 
I just think about, I mean, when Iron Man came out, you know, I was, I was single. I, yeah, I was single. I was pretty, I was, I was pretty much, I was very single at that point. You know what I'm saying? I was young, you know, and I was brolic as hell and, every, and you know, everything underneath the sun, you know, and it's just like, now, of course, you know, I'm a little older now. Got no grays. I'm lucky on that aspect. Got no grays, not no receding hairline. Now that struggle shit that others be having. But it's just like, now, of course, I have life. The life though is beating, life of those is starting to beat me down. <laughs> you know, and it's just, but those comic books, they were a constant though. You know, that's what, you know, that's what kept, you know, that's what kept shit going, you know, and it's, it's not, now, of course, now we have to look, you know, look towards a new arc, a new, you know, new story, a new saga, whatever that may be after Spider-Man Far From Home. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, re fully recommend watching this, you know, from beginning to end, you know, make sure you go to the bathroom, don't eat anything that's too crazy, so you have to, so you have to get up and actually use it in the middle of the, in the middle of the movie, um, you know, yeah, and like I said, you know, it, it's a good watch, you know, like I said, it's not perfect, but it does what it needs it to do, and it'll probably shatter some records by the time its theatrical run is over. So, yeah, salute Avengers Endgame. And I hope to God there's no uh, deleted scenes or or, 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 or uh, uh, a director's cut because three hours is damn too long as it is. Uh, I'm good. I don't have ADHD or anything like that, so I'm, I, I can I can watch a long comic book movie as long as it makes sense. Yeah, I just watch a long comic book movie as long as niggas remember it's a comic book movie. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> Famous <laughs> last words. Not a Netflix, not a drama, not a Cinemix or Showtime series, you know. 